There's a couple different methods for determining whether a function is even or odd. Now, graphically, if you have a picture of the graph where you can graph it, you can tell it's even if when you reflect it over the y-axis that it matches with itself. So you can see here, this if you fold this W-shaped graph, it's gonna to match to itself. This is even. If you fold this parabola over the y-axis, you see it matches with itself, it's even. If you take this absolute value graph, you fold it over the y-axis, it matches with itself, it's even. So all three of these top ones are gonna be even functions. So reflection over the y-axis, that's how you test. With odd functions, you wanna see if it's 180 degree, like a half uh, turn rotation about the origin. If you rotate this, y equals x cubed graph around the origin, 180 degrees, it will match with itself. That tells us that it's an odd function. For this one, this is like the line y equals x. Again, if you take this graph and you rotate 180 degrees, a half turn, it will match with itself. That means it's odd. And this one's like a y equals sine of x. And again, you can see if you rotate it 180 degrees, it matches with itself. So these are gonna be odd functions. But algebraically, the way you test it is you put negative x into your function, okay, in place of x on the right side, if you get the original function back, then we call this an even function, meaning if you graph it, it's gonna be a reflection over the y-axis. If you put negative x in and you get the original function back, but it's multiplied by negative one, then that means that it's an odd function, which means it's a rotation about the origin, like these bottom three ones here. So let's go through some examples. These are some typical ones that you'll see in your class. Uh, for number one, f of x equals two times absolute value of x minus four. So our test is we're gonna put negative x in in place of x. We know when you take the absolute value of a negative quantity or a positive quantity, you end up getting that positive quantity. So this is really gonna be the same as two times absolute value of x minus four, you can see we're getting back the original function, the original equation, when we plugged in that negative x, that tells us that this is gonna be an even function. Okay, let's look at number two. This one here, again, same process. All you're doing is you're, wherever you see x, just put negative x in. So this is gonna be two times negative x squared uh, minus one. But when you have a, a negative squared, that's gonna be the same thing as a positive, right? So negative times a negative is a positive. So that's the same as 2x squared minus 1 times negative x. Now, you can see this whole equation here, it's just like the original function we had. It's just now it's multiplied by negative 1. And that tells us that it's an odd function, meaning it's going to be a rotation around the origin, okay? Number three, same idea. We're just going to replace x with negative x. Wherever you see that x, put in negative x. And the key is to put it in parentheses, so you take it as a group. But if you have a negative to an odd power, that's going to make it negative. If you have a negative to an even power, that's going to make this quantity positive. But then times negative three, of course, is negative. When we look at this, is it the same as the original function? Definitely not. If we factor out a negative one, like this, we get two x cubed plus three x squared minus four, does this look like the original equation? No, it doesn't. If it did, and it was just multiplied by negative one, that would be odd. This one is actually neither even or odd, okay? For number four, we've got some fractional exponents, rational exponents, same process, we're replacing x with negative x, right? And remember, to switch this into radical form, the denominator is the root. The numerator is the power. But think about it, when you have a cube root or the fifth root or the seventh root of a negative number, that's just gonna be the same as negative whatever this quantity is here, right? So like if you had the cube root of negative eight, that's just gonna be a negative two, it's gonna be a negative number. And then multiply by this 10 here, this is gonna make this a negative 10. Okay, let me just move this down here, negative 10. And then uh, this quantity here is raised to the fourth power, right? So you can see we're ending up with negative 10 times x to the four-fifths power. It's the same as the original function, but see how it's multiplied by negative one? That means this is gonna be an odd function. And then the last example, number five, same process, we're replacing x with negative x. Again, notice how I'm putting it in parentheses to keep everything organized. Negative to an odd power is gonna be negative. So this is just gonna be like, like that. Negative times a negative gives you a positive. So if we simplify all this down, we get x to the fifth plus x plus one. And you can see it's not the same as the original function. If we factor out a negative one, we get negative x to the fifth, negative x minus one. And does that look like the original function? Uh, no, it does not because see positive one, negative one, so it's not odd. So this one is neither and you've got it. If you wanna see more examples with even and odd functions, uh, follow me over to the video right there.
Again, this channel is all about making learning math less stressful for you. If you like my teaching style, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos.